This is The H-Files with John Porter Welcome to the H-Files from Clyde Valley Hog. Jaipur at the Ignition Festival of Motoring at the Glasgow SECC, along with Clyde Valley Hog. We were on our stand um, on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We were hoping to do a parade lab, but we never got to do it. But we've got a good, uh, a good selection of celebrities that we managed to capture, um, despite being told that we weren't allowed to talk to them. We managed to blag our way in. Had a chat with them, had an interview with them, and um, we'll go through them shortly. We uh, didn't get to do our parade lap, unfortunately, but we have been promised that we'll be able to do it next year. We had 21 bikes on the stand, so good uh, good representation from the club. It was uh, very popular. Um, we even had a duel with the uh, blood, blood bike guys, with my siren and their siren. So I think an honourable draw was the conclusion. Anyway, moving on, um, we were hoping, as I said, I was hoping to interview some of the celebs, but you know, we were basically told they were under contract and we couldn't get to talk to them. So we were coming across the floor one on Saturday morning. DC and some of his entourage from Red Bull had obviously just been doing a track walk and they walked in the back door right beside their stand. So I asked DC if he could, uh, I introduced myself, asked him if we could uh, do an interview and he said no problem. So that's what's going to follow first. Uh, then later on, we get invited into the Red Bull uh, pit. We were out taking—I was out taking photographs—and um, one of the mechanics, Dave, had recognised us from earlier on. So he took us over, and we had a chat with them. Uh, we nearly lost the awning at one point, so you'll hear that uh, the wind was quite wild on the Sunday. And then we also got to speak to Jimmy McRae, the former rally driver. So, all in all, a good weekend for Clyde Valley Hog. Um, kind of moving on, we'll start with the, the interview. So, DC, uh, John Porter from Clyde Valley Hog, uh, welcome for welcome to the H-Files. We are, we're going to have a, a quick chat about uh, your your thoughts on this event. Um, with that, what, what do you think of the event so far? Well, I think it's fantastic, and I'm it, sort of kicking myself that I wasn't a bit more proactive in uh, the days when I was actually racing to try and get a Formula 1 car up here, especially back in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s when I was actually uh, capable of winning some races. But for whatever reason, it, um, it just never came together. So it's, it's great that we have this opportunity now uh, to celebrate motorsports, whether, you know, obviously there's a lot of competitors here, but I think, um, you know, for families to be able to bring the kids along and, and to see that there's opportunities in what I think is a great industry. So, anything you miss about the sport? Um, anything you've left behind? Being part of a, a big team of people that are all aligned, all focused, all hungry to try and have success. And that's a wonderful environment in which to, to live. So, you've had um, you've had a chance to speak to some of the fans. Um, I've seen you signing autographs and stuff. Um, what, what, kind of, what, what do you take from the, the fans that you get around here? You know what I've really noticed, and a lot of people would think I would say this because I'm at home and you know you want to say nice things to the environment you're in, but I really notice how polite people are. And not by that, I mean it's little things like you know asking, please can I have a picture? And then once you've done it, you, you get a thank you at the end. And that's not to be disrespectful to other places I've been, but it's really struck me about the, the level of manners that we have um, and, and the crowd have and the motorsport crowd have. And, you know, I have a, a seven-and-a-half-year-old son, so I'm going through the whole, you know, what is it, please, and thank you, and all the stuff that we were taught with our parents, and now we're teaching our kids, and, and hopefully it will perpetuate, you know, through the generations. But, you know, the, that classic thing about manners costing nothing, and, and a smile and a please and a thank you will get you a long way, and just generally treat people with respect. And I was always brought up with that um, uh, mantra for my, my parents, who I saw last night, a, a wee family shindig, and, you know, I'm sort of uh, say, putting that into, instilling that into our son um, going forward because the most important thing is to be polite and respectful. You can't always be polite and respectful because sometimes you're pissed off, sometimes you're, <laughs> you're running late, sometimes you're just in a bad mood. But, you know, I think being able to recognise that and uh, try your best to, to give as much time as possible when you have time, um, you know, I don't think that's too much to ask. 
Did you ever get the chance to drive for any other teams? Um, I know we, we know you drove for Williams, you drove for Red Bull, and you drove for McLaren. Um, did you ever get a Ferrari opportunity? I, I always wanted to have an equal status. Uh, you know, I couldn't. I was offered a chance to drive for Ferrari uh, by Jean Todd back in '96 when I joined McLaren, and the contract he offered um, was if, if Michael was fifth and I was fourth, I had to take the instruction to move over. If I was third and he was fourth, and, and so it was on. And I just couldn't sign a contract that committed me to being a number two. Now, in the fullness of time, I know that I never won the championship, but my, my contract at McLaren alongside Mika, although we occasionally had team orders, largely speaking, I had equal opportunity on engines and gearboxes and all that sort of thing. And that at least gave me the, the feeling that I could, you know, eat, uh, on an equal footing, go out and try my best and see what I could deliver. Who, um, who, who was your fastest teammate? Um. My fastest was definitely Mika Hakkinen in my mind. Uh, I think he was one of the naturally quickest guys uh, out in the racetrack. He had a very short career actually. He didn't spend a lot of time in Formula 1, but he won those two titles. And he had some great battles with Schumacher. So they were the two sort of main guys at that time. Kimi, I, I just don't get Kimi. He's still... In, you know, I was three years teammate with him and I didn't really get him. He's got great speed and, and that sort of stuff, but you know, he's not a grafter. He doesn't put the effort in with the team, but yet, if you say something negative like I am now, then you know, a lot of people really, really like him because he's, you know, shut up, I know what I'm doing. Um, I think was his famous line from Abu Dhabi. So, I just don't, coming back to, to my said serious uh, answer at the beginning about being polite and respectful, I just don't get it, treating people badly. What's the, what do you think of the current state of uh, Formula One at the moment, DC? I think it definitely disappeared up its own arse for a while there with, um, <laughs> with, you know, with all this sort of save the planet, hybrid and what, what have you. And it just, it's put a lot of pressure on Formula One in the last few years because the small teams, you know, they went from having an engine supply at £5 million pounds a year, which is a huge amount of money, to suddenly having to pay £20 million pounds a year, um, all under the umbrella of um, being environmentally friendly. And there's no question that the technology they develop is it's super impressive. You know, 160 horsepower stored in a tiny little battery pack, which, you know, all of the, the hybrid technology road cars, a huge amount of the performance is lost in overcoming the weight of storing all that energy in the batteries. So the only way to really accelerate that development is in, in sport and motor racing, because you have to. Road car manufacturers aspire to, but they don't have the same pressure to, to deliver it, because they're not directly in competition against the stopwatch. So I, I'm hopeful that we're now coming back into with wider cars, wider slicks, things like that, back to the days where the drivers looked like they were working hard. You know, my whole career I trained, I, you know, to a, a level which makes me still feel uncomfortable. You know, I used to train twice a day and, and everything was focused around being physically the best I could be. And it was hard, it was really, really hard to drive those cars quickly for two hours. You know, a lot of the races you get out and you were knackered. Um, you know, even to walk up to the podium, it was really uncomfortable at times. But you try and hide it from your competitors. But the time you finish all the press conference and stuff, you get back to your driver room and you, you know, bloods, and, parts of your body that shouldn't be bleeding and, and uh, you know, blisters from the car rubbing on the ground and on your hand and just generally it was tough but that was a great feeling to know that you pushed your, yourself mentally and physically. So I think if you look now at the lap times, the fastest sort of race laps were from around 2004. So the, the race laps have got slower and slower as the cars have got heavier and less downforce. So I think it will take a big step back towards it. It might even be faster and I think it should be because we live in a world where you know, computing power and, and, and things around us just get faster and faster, more efficient, and that's why you keep buying all the latest technology. You know, an old Nokia phone will still do the same job as your latest iPhone in terms of uh, audio communication, but we like all of the other technology, and that is part of, you know, what appeals to human beings. So, um, I'm hoping that it will be, they'll always be the quickest team and that those at the back are struggling, but I just hope they'll be closer, more competitive, racing where you really think, God, I, do, I don't think I could do that. And that has to be important. You know, I, there's, there's so many sports I look at and think, I would not want to be there. And it gives you a healthy respect for those that are. So if it's not too uncomfortable for you, who do you think's the best driver on the grid today? 
Um, you know, Fernando, I think, had a period where he was sort of considered the driver's driver, but it's, you know, the, it's getting more and more difficult to, to judge where he is with the McLaren performance right now. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the obvious things like Seb is a very, very uh, high performer, Daniel Ricciardo, Max, you, you know, what he does at 18 years old is super impressive. So I think there's a, a lot of them on that sort of tier one level. Nico is a hard one to sort of position because he's, he wins a lot. You know, he's fast, he's professional, but he just seems not as good at the wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling as a Lewis or, or Max or someone like that. So, you know, take away Lewis, he'd be world champion. So, DC, do you think you could go back in, into Formula One? You know, could you jump back in there and be competitive straight away? I, I, I was very lucky to drive for Williams, which was a team that I really followed when I was growing up, and uh, you know, started as a test driver. So the first car I drove when I was 19 was a McLaren. It was the V12 Honda that was driven by Berger and, and Senna. And if I look at my career, I was a test driver for Mansell, I was a test driver for Senna, I was a test driver for Prost. So the three guys that I really watched as a young lad at the telly, I got to work with and experience. So all of those experiences I had as a, as a driver are worth so much more than thinking I'll just jump in the Mercedes now and if I can just learn how to beat Lewis, I can win the championship. You know, of course, when I, the reason it's difficult for me to give a, um, you know, a different answer is because you don't know what it means not to want to race until you decide you, you've, you've had your, your time. And I could never understand why anyone would ever choose to retire when I was racing because you're 100% committed. Everything you do is about competition and trying to improve. And then one day you wake up and go, I don't think I'm getting any better. And the minute you think that, that's when you're mentally retired. And as soon as you're mentally retired, the next generation comes up and just do a better job because they have absolute belief, absolute commitment, and can't imagine never being a racing driver. So although, of course, I remember racing in Formula One, and of course, I'm still involved as a, as a commentator, I don't really remember much about being a Formula One driver because I've switched that off and I've moved on to another life, um, still associated with it. But I'm no longer a racing driver. I've got the memories and uh, you know some of the you know remember the highs and the lows, but I just can't rediscover and reconnect what it felt like to to want to you know when you went to bed at night the last thing you thought about was how you could improve as a driver the next day and the first thing you thought about you woke up was how to improve. Now when I go to bed at night I, I just hope I open my eyes again in the morning. <laughs> Fix that, you know. Okay, and um I'm really looking forward to the new cars for next year, the mm. bigger tiles. Have you yeah. seen any of them yet? I've just seen on the, um, on the images online, so I've not actually seen them uh, live, but yeah, they're, they're wider, they'll have more grip, definitely going to be better. So you're looking forward to getting in this car today and giving yep. it a tonk around the track? Absolutely, yeah, I think it's a fantastic setup, isn't it? So great that we've got this event in Scotland. And we've got the weather, so you've got uh, that with you? Unbelievable, yeah, I'm going to have to get the sun cream on. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Okay, <laughs> thanks DC, cheers, cheers I'll let you go on. Cheers, Thank mate. You. Thanks, that. Cheers. Oh, and what, one more thing, DC. Um, have you got a Harley? I, I have a, I've got a Vero. So there you got it. From the horse's mouth, in, indeed, uh, DC has a V-Rod. Um, so I've, we asked him if he wanted to bring his uh, own one the next time. And uh, I believe our merchandiser, Catherine, who was also my glamorous camera assistant, um, is sending him a complimentary Clyde Valley hog patch. So we'll have DC uh, as part of the Clyde Valley team. Check out www.clydevalleyhog.com So moving on, um, we had a chat with the guys in the Red Bull pit, so let's listen to that now. Okay, John Porter for the H-Files in the Red Bull pit at the Ignition Festival of Motoring, speaking to Dave. And we've got the other Dave with us as well as a backup in case one of our Dave's fails. <laughs> so Dave, um, you used to be a Formula One mechanic in the pit crew and travelling around the world. And now you're travelling around the, the sunny Scotland to the, <laughs> the festivals sunny at the moment. like this. Yeah, well, we, sunny at the moment. We brought the sun with us. Yeah, I heard it was a bit wet yesterday when the cars were out in the track. It was a bit, but it made it more interesting. Yeah, yeah. More good. fun to see. So, uh, when you guys are out and doing your pit crew stuff and it starts raining at a Grand Prix, it's great for us as spectators. 
what's it like for you guys working on the pits? Uh, well, obviously you do get a bit wet, but it doesn't change too much for us because we're prepared for it and yeah. you got all the gear to cope with the, uh, the changing weather. Cool. So, it's a young man's game travelling around the world. You guys are getting on a bit now, much like myself. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> We had left off. <laughs> so, Say about the weather, there goes the awning. <laughs> yeah, the awning just a bit took off there. So, we better. Is that meant to be under that mat? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. Bloody hell. So, that was, a bit, um, that was a bit of excitement. So, when's your car going out today? Uh, it's one o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah, yeah, DC is driving. Cool. I spoke to DC yesterday. He did. He seems a decent enough guy. Yeah, DC's a he's a great man. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a true Scott. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he's careful with his money. But yeah, he's a good man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I saw some footage of him on the way back from was it Hungary and the and the private jet with Mark and Jensen Button. Yeah. And they looked like they were having a good laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got well. <laughs> yeah. Take it, you guys don't get to travel on a private jet. No, 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 no definitely not. No, we're, we're generally at the end of the scale, aren't we? Yeah. Do you do you have to travel on the lorries or do you have a? No, generally you fly? We fly to events. Right. Um, well, this event here, we, we can't by train, so right. it okay. seems to be the easier option. Cool. Good. Okay. Well, thanks very much, guys. It's been uh, great. And else, you think that the the viewing, well, not the viewing, the listening public of Clyde Valley Hog are wanting to hear about Red Bull? I'd like to think so. I think, yeah. We're a good friendly team, so yeah, I'd like to think yeah. that they would do. So, um, next year, how's the new car looking? Any kind of insight into it? There's no really insight. Um, design hasn't really started yet. Um, and we, we, we'll start design and building earnest, obviously, later on in the year. Right, okay. So, you're still working on the, this year's car? You're still developing? We are, yeah. Also, we ch we're still chasing the championship. We still want to try it. I finished ahead of Ferrari, yeah. which put a second in the championship. We know we can't catch Mercedes, but hopefully we'll be able to bring in, reel in the Ferraris. I think um, with your, your driver lineup this year, with Daniel and, and, and Max, Daniel in particular seems to be a fantastic driver, and the yeah. guy never stops smiling apart from Monaco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, that was I think he had reason not to smile in Monaco, yeah. but he bounced back, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah but they're both, they're both good drivers, they're both easy to get on with. They both obviously push really hard, yeah. and that's what we expect. Great, fantastic. Thanks very much, guys. That's been uh, more than more than accommodating. So, from Clyde Valley Hog to the Red Bull team, thanks again. Thank no worries. Guys. Cheers. So, a brief chat with Dave and Dave, and thanks again to the Red Bull team for all their hospitality over the weekend. And uh, we wandered down the pit lane, or yeah, I suppose it is a pit lane, and we wandered down there. We saw. Um, some of the other cars, there was a Lotus Formula 1 car and a Williams FW uh, from the 80s. And then we managed to capture Mr. Jimmy McRae. So, a brief chat with him now. There you go, that shows. So, um, John Porter for H-Files here with Jimmy McRae, famous rally driver. Hi, how are you? Uh, yep. And uh, exhibitionist extraordinaire. <laughs> You've been giving it Tonka. Thank you. Well, you've got to try and put on a show, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, the so, old Subaru's going well, so and it sounds, everybody thinks it sounds lovely. So it's, yeah. It's sort of how you went down the back straight. You, were, uh, you weren't holding back? No, at least I stopped at the end of the straight. Some of the rally boys didn't stop at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw one of the guys uh, rolled a, a car on Friday. Did you aye, see that one? Yeah. Aye, no, aye. Uh, up, up here then... A McLaren went off and damaged all the front of it yeah, as well. So, aye. Yeah. They got it replaced quite quickly though. I think they uh, had a, a run down to Leicester and picked up a new front end for it. If you can afford a McLaren, you can afford to fix it. <laughs> well, that's it. So what do you think of this event? I think it's fantastic. You know, when I heard about this at the beginning of the year, I thought, oh, I would never be able to get that in Glasgow. But they've done it and, you know, the, the, the people that are here and the popularity and everybody's just yeah. so chuffed with it it's great really yeah. really great right. and we, we spoke to dc earlier and he's um, he was loving it he thinks uh, it's great yeah. it's, it's really I mean, good where, i mean where can these guys you know around about here where can they come and watch a grand prix car doing what david's done yeah. with it and the rally cars and all, all that everything yeah even down to the big american 
rusty old pickup. Yeah, know? I saw them. I, I, there, there seems to that seems to be quite a fashion these days, bringing over these yeah. uh, these beat up. I think they call it patina. Is that what they call it? Got is patina. It? Aye. Aye. I was going to say rust, so rust bring, box. Aye, they bring them over. They, they mm. folk driving them around. In fact, one of our guys has got a, a short block Chevy, 5.7 uh, litre. 5.7. Oh, it can uh, shift, uh, but uh, 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 he, he's got to hold the door shut with string. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so, what about? Uh, the other, the rest of the thing. Have you been round and had a look yeah, at the I've exhibits? Sure there, I know. I think. Do you see the bikes there? Do you see our Harleys? I've seen the Harleys there as well. Aye. So we were hoping to get a parade lap, and mm. we thought we were going to be able to do that this year, but apparently mm. that's not been able to happen. So next year we're hoping to get the parade lap. No, done. I'm sure. I'm sure. But, um, mm-hmm. That'd be no. good because no, we're no, a wee bit disappointed that we didn't get a run around the track. This year. I think, to be honest, you know, it's been very much suck it and see. Yeah. This year and uh, proved a bit of a, a big success. And will you be coming back next year then? Oh, if they ask me back, I'll come back. Oh, I'm sure they'll ask you. <laughs> Provided I don't do anything wrong the next couple of rounds. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much, Mr. Okay. McCray. A pleasure then. speaking to you. Okay, no bother. Take Cheers. Care. Bye. Cheers. So there we go. Not a bad weekend for Clyde Valley Hog H Files. Um, quite interesting. A few people that we don't normally speak to, mixing it with the, the celebs. And uh, that concludes our episode i'd just like to give a thank you to catherine for helping me out with the photography and karen for helping us when we were blagging our way over to the pit lane and then to the other areas as well so thanks to them and it's bye from me (laughs) see you again